everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alice Suido. I'm a current senior at Cornell University studying environmental science. A big question I'm getting a lot is, what are you gonna do after you graduate? And that's a great and valid question. And to be honest, everyone has this question, right? What do environmental science majors do after they graduate? What kind of jobs do they have? You know, faculty get this from prospective students. And then when you're in there, people are always asking you, what do you plan to do after you get this degree? So I thought that this was a really important question to answer, especially because I've actually gotten this question multiple times through Instagram DMs or comments on my YouTube channel. So I thought I would like to talk about this today, especially because I've had this job hunting experience now. So the first thing I want to mention is environmental science is not like other majors where like if you study business, you kind of know I'm going to do marketing, I'm going to do uh, consulting, I'm going to do uh, finance or medicine or law. It's not really like that. You kind of have to figure out, okay, with my skill set and my interests and what's out there and what's needed to be done, this is the career I'm going to do. One way to figure out what you're good at or what kind of skills you have as a whole is to write a resume. And after you write your resume, you can list down all the technical skills you have, all the soft skills you have, and every other kind of experience you've had in one piece of paper. And that will help you really hone in to figure out, okay, what are the things that I've done and what are the things that I want to continue to pursue? So for example, let's say you've written down everything and you realize you really have done a lot of communication work. Yes, you are a scientist as a major, but you've been really into the communication aspect of bringing this science to other people. And I would recommend, you know, maybe you could do social media work or we'll find places at a museum or even work for, you know, National Geographic. So what I'm trying to say is that after you figure out perhaps what kind of area you're really interested in, in terms of like what kind of knowledge base you're really interested in within environmental science, try to pair it up with some of the skills you have to figure out, okay, these are the two things that I want to put together, my content that I know and the skills that I have. Another great way to find a job is to use your resume and talk to people within the field at your school or at your previous internships to learn about what are the other opportunities that are similar to something I've done before. And that will really help you figure out, okay, where do I even start in this career finding process? Another thing you can think about is figure out how you got interested in the environment. I know I mentioned this previously in my other video, but figuring out how you got interested in the environment might help you remember, okay, I was really interested in this and this is why I even began my journey to in the first place. Of course, some people interests change, but sometimes you're like, oh, when I was a kid, I really loved to go outside. So I've been doing all, all this office work, but I realized I actually really want to do field work as my career. So that can also be something that can help remind you if that's something that's applicable to you. So after you figure out what you like and what you're good at, the next thing to do is find out what kind of careers there are in the world. There are generally four sectors in which people go to within environmental science, which are academia, NGOs, government, and industry. And this might be pretty useful if you're really sure about the way in which some of these industries operate. You know, if you want to go to NGO because you're really interested in advocacy work, then that kind of would make sense. But sometimes I feel like these sector-based kind of um, categorizations might be a bit limited. For example, if you want to be a soil scientist, I'm pretty sure you can probably be a soil scientist in any of these sectors. So I think it's more about figuring out um, what kind of careers and what kind of aspects of a career that are really important to you and that will help find a career. So the first thing I would like to talk about is myself, obviously. So when I was doing this job hunt, I realized that I wasn't someone who wanted to do the same thing every day. And I realized from my research that oftentimes that's what you are doing. You're doing a lot of the same things every day because you need to get those results in your methodology. And that's not really what I wanted to do. So I really decided that from my early career, I wanted to do something really broad and project focused, something that had a lot of different projects going on at the same time. And I really liked a fast paced environment. So if you really like a broad range of work and working on different kinds of projects, I would recommend something like consulting, working at a think tank or an NGO. These are places where you probably will get that kind of experience. Some of the names that I can think of are The Nature Conservancy, EDF, NRDC, WWF, World Resource Institute. These are all different kinds of organizations that you can look into to figure out what kind of jobs are there. 
but this list is not exclusive I generally name those because they're pretty international and they have a lot of locations but look for a local NGO within your community if you're really interested in policy I would recommend something like working at a governmental agency or um, working at an NGO or even working at a think tank so like there are many ways in which you can do policy and they might be similar to what I just mentioned but one thing I want to especially mention here is that when you think of government agencies don't just think of like those big ones you know in the US most states themselves have some sort of department of environment or department of conservation most counties have a uh, planning committee and you could probably find jobs there or you know look at your state level and eventually maybe national level but yeah always look within your direct community first because you probably will be able to know more about the situations in your home community now most of these jobs that i mentioned are pretty indoorsy if you're someone who really wants to be outdoors make sure you find a job that is outdoors because being an office job will feel really stifling if that's not what you like to do so if you're someone who likes to do outdoor work or hybrid work but you also like to do a lot of different projects, I would really recommend something like consulting, particularly consulting that does environmental impact assessments where you have to go to a site, maybe collect a water sample, or like going to an agricultural field and going down and seeing the soil. So I think one of the biggest consulting firms is probably like environmental resource management or something. It's called ERM, but there are tons of consulting firms out there. You know, even the big firms like ENY and Deloitte will probably have a climate change or environmental department, but they're probably more focused towards risk or something to do with um, the interests of a particular business. So if you're someone who doesn't really want to do like a broad kind of work set and you really know that you want to do something specifically, then that's really great too. One thing I want to mention is that I'm someone who really likes water and I've studied a lot of water related things, but when people realize that they think that I'm an engineer and I know wastewater stuff, I know the basic steps, but I am not an engineer. And so um, if you face a similar dilemma, look into like nature centers or places that manage lakes or ecology related things. So those are kind of places that you can start if you're really interested in some sort of particular aspect, because I'm sure places like nature centers or national parks or you know committees that manage certain kinds of ecosystems will be looking for analysts. For. Another recommendation I have is to actually just think of all the companies that you like. I know um, people would really like to work for a B Corporation and that stands for some company that has committed enough kind of sustainability goals to have that B Corp certificate and that means that that company is considered sustainable. Um, you know, that's a great place to look, see a B Corp list and if you're interested in working for them or if you're not really into that, maybe like just looking into firms that you really like, you know, big companies like Apple and Tesla, they're all looking for sustainability or environmental and health analysts for their company. And I think that that would also be a great place to start. You know, you'd work at some place that you really like, like, okay, I really like Google and you find a sustainability associate position. Well, then you have like the best of both worlds. Um, just know that sometimes these positions might require higher amounts of experience, especially if you're going to those kind of big firms. But just think about like regular firms that you really like and see if they have some sort of ESG analysis that they need. I know I mentioned this before, but if you're really into communication, well, trust me, the environmental world needs a lot of communicators. And there are a lot of positions out there, you know, look at different museums that are out there or a botanic garden or even a national park. Like these are great places that you can start to look at to do a communication work. One thing that's really up and coming for communicators is citizen science. So if you're really interested in citizen science, that's something that I feel like is really needed because we need people to be engaged with the natural world, but also it's a great way to source data. So, you know, Cornell's really famous citizen science platform is eBird, where a bunch of people all over the world go and mark where they've seen particular birds. And that really helps build a database. And I think that's a great place for communicators to start because you'll be there teaching people how to use these kind of citizen science uh, programs. Other places could be are like ethical sanctuaries or some sort of place where you know you have interaction with people and that's how get that's how you get people excited. Or 
even places like National Geographic where you do something to do with film and you get to go outside. But also when I mention about like museums such as like the Smithsonian or the Natural History Museum, these are not just places to communicate, they are also places for research. So the next part I want to talk about is research. You know, academia seems like the only place to do research, but it really isn't. If you're someone who is a bachelor's and you didn't get into a master's program because of how competitive it was this year, I feel like you can still do research in a different place, you know, try to look at museums try to look at the national park, I'm sure that those places are living laboratories and they would probably need someone to do some sort of research there or even collect data. Another place where there are a lot of research opportunities are perhaps places like the Oak Ridge Institute and that place gives like one year uh, research positions for even undergraduates with like the EPA to do research. So if you didn't get into academia straight away in terms of like a traditional master's degree program, please don't despair. There are other opportunities for you. And I'm sure eventually if you work for these places, maybe they'll fund your master's with you because they really want you. And the last thing I wanted to mention for this entire video is that you don't have to study environmental science to have an environmental science job. So let's say you're almost about to graduate and you realize, oh my gosh, I actually really want to work in the environmental field. This is something that is really important your skill sets will be valuable to the environmental science community. What the world needs is not just more environmental scientists, but every other person doing something sustainably. And so if you're a computer scientist or a business person or even anyone or even a lawyer, you know, the environmental community needs people like you. There are a bunch of positions where some places like we need an economics person because we have climate finance as part of our goal or we need a CS person because we're doing this big data research or we're coding some sort of app or um, building a website. These kinds of things are really important. All, all kinds of organizations need these kind of people. If you are a lawyer, trust me, the NRDC is looking for lawyers all the time because they know that like the environmental front also need lawyers to work on specific cases and litigations. So when people ask me what kind of job you can get as an environmental scientist, honestly, there's so many. I kind of tell them what I do and what I'm interested in, but I also mention to them that this kind of major brings you to so many places depending on how you make use of it and what you are interested in. If you like this video, I will be making more of these kind of videos on careers and finding a job and the next videos I'll be making are more like where, how do you specifically look for jobs in America or in Singapore, ways in which you can land your dream job or even things like salary and environmental careers. So I'm probably going to make this into like a career series because I realized that there are lots of questions to answer within the career world and I think that it'd be great to answer them all. So I hope this answered questions for those who commented on my previous posts or messaged me on Instagram but thank you so much and I am listening to those comments. I'm so sorry that I take so long to answer them but I hope to actually respond this time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe. It really helps me figure out what you like and what you're not interested in. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!